All right. Uh, I got a 2006 uh, Volkswagen Passat. And uh, the dealer wants an insane amount of money to make a key. Um, I was able to find a key just like this on eBay. You can get them used for like 15 bucks. You can get them brand new for 40 bucks. Um, this is the four button. They also have a three button. But the remote control function is independent of the key function. And there is no key per se the key is inside and I'll show you that in a little bit but uh, what we actually what I've actually done the key is an RFID chip I've uh, captured it in here put it in some tape so that I can kind of hold on to it keep track of it a little bit better um, but what happens is uh, pull this out make it a little bit easier to see this is the immobilizer ignition switch and when you put the key in, now this key has had the immobilizer chip removed, that little piece of uh, grain of rice that's in the, uh, in the fob. I actually pulled it out, and I'll, again, I'll show you how to do that. But when you go to put that in the car, it will give you a message, something like that, immobilizer active. And uh, for anybody that's ever accidentally done it, you'll also find that now the key, uh, if you go to try to start the car, the car doesn't start, and then of course when you go to withdraw the key it's stuck so there's actually a trick where if you push the uh, you can actually hear it clicking and then you can just grab the key so uh, what I was able to do was after removing this from my working key and I only have one I've decided and have been able to test it out and with that little piece of tape so that I can hold on to it a little bit better, I've actually found that if I set it there, same key, put it in, and no immobilizer active. And go ahead and try and start. And she starts right up. Uh, the key also does not get captured, so shutting the car off. And withdrawing the key is very simple. Uh, that allows me to actually use this fob or any number of fobs. Now, if you want to program this this key that you get on eBay for 15 bucks, you're going to probably need some sort of a VAGCOM, MicroCAN, uh, OBD2. This one came from Ross Tech, but it will allow you to program up to four of these key fobs and when you go to program you have to make sure that you have all four all at the same time and uh, probably be able to put a link to that in the uh, comments below so uh, I'll break now and I'll show you how I removed the, uh, the little grain of rice from the key fob and what I kinda plan on doing maybe is actually gluing that in place use a little piece of mastic or something glue it right in the corner and I actually found that that corner or that corner were the best and uh, you got to be careful because down deep down inside there's actually a, um, a movable piece so if you inadvertently glue that back plane down it will uh, you'll, you'll you'll have problems but if you just glue it right there in the corner or, you know if you want you could probably just even tape it right there in the corner but uh, Hope that works out for everybody. I know it's kind of this this model, this series. It's a, I believe it's 1995 and a half, or sorry, 2005 and a half, all the way through 2010. Jettas, Passats, GTIs, all those. They have this push button start. So if this gave you a hand, let me know. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll be right back with uh, how to take the little uh, immobilizer out of the key fob. Real quick, uh, show you that the remote does in fact work. So there's unlock, and there's lock. Okay, back in the house. Uh, this is actually the original key fob. And for anybody that doesn't already know, a little button on the side. This would be normally the valet key. This is actually the blank that came with the replacement key fob. And then this part slips off. 
and then you can actually start spreading it. Now this, this key fob's already been taken apart a couple times, so you might find that it comes apart a little bit more differently than yours. So the back cover should come off. You'll find your battery. So this is a little bit of a battery replacement video too. Just pry that out. Um, my case has already been disassembled, so it's actually coming apart. What you will more than likely find on your factor original cases is that it's glued down right along this edge and right along this edge. So if you can get up underneath it here and then use a small screwdriver to pry it right along there and pry it right along there, the whole thing will pop loose. There is no glue up around here and then it'll just come off like that. Now some people they have problems with their buttons. You can actually buy replacement buttons. You can um, re-solder those. Uh, but that's not really the topic of this discussion. You can find that on, on uh, YouTube. So this part was glued down. This is actually your immobilizer chip. This is what makes this key a key. What I'm going to show you is that when you get this plastic part off, you flip it over and that key is actually contained in a little rubber, little piece of uh, like rubber silicone glue. And what I was able to do was actually get in there, kind of loosen it up ahead of time, but this one's already been removed and then reinstalled. And just pry that bad boy out of there. And there's your key. That is what it is to lock or lock the ignition on these Immobilizer 4 keys. So, like I said, that is the non-functioning one. And this is the one that I placed in some tape just so that it's easier to manipulate. And I was able to manipulate it until I found a good place in the ignition cylinder. If, of course, you just simply wanted to buy a new key or replace an old damaged key, you could actually just swap those immobilizer. Uh, there are these immobilizer keys. They actually call them the... Uh, I can't remember what they call them. It's a 48. But uh, you can actually replace... You can just swap them from, from any, any key fob to any other key fob. And then um, when you go to put this back in, you can, the, the one that I had actually came with a little, little dauber of, uh, looks like tack, you know, uh, some sort of like craft tack or something, just little gooey stuff. And that was all that was holding it in. But you just push that back down in there, put your little tack on top, and then you can reassemble your key fob. So that down and if you want you really worry about it you can glue these sides back down but I found that the uh, the key fob actually holds it together just fine start with the uh, this end first clip it together and then slide your back cap on and then this key this part's pretty important um, you could always leave it out this is what they kind of sort of use for the valet uh, but if you don't have it on there it can allow the cap to come off and just locks in you guys got any questions, comments, concerns? Give me a shout out on the uh, on the comments. Thanks for watching.